on a wet Monday morning. Uh, I'm smiling because I was just watching uh, a gentleman who has a motorized wheelchair complete with its own roof and everything else um, and he's busy doing cleanup on the street. Not because he has to, because he chooses to. Oh, not on the street, on the sidewalk. Um, yeah, he's got one of those long-armed grabber things and his dog. <laughs> I don't know, I love to see things like that when people take it. You know, he's of an age where he can sit at home and do nothing, but he chooses to go out for his morning ride on his scooter and uh, do clean up in the block where he lives. I like that. All right, so an overcast it's been wet, it's not actually raining at this moment, but it obviously has been pretty wet uh, Monday morning. It's a very important day for me today, it's January 12th. And January 12th is a two year anniversary of my giving up smoking. And so I've got to make sure that I give credit where credit's due in this one. Um, and that would be obviously to myself to some degree. <laughs> But it was funny because, you know, you always have to wonder um, what what was the difference this last time? Because, you know, I've given up smoking so many times it's not even funny. And, and so for those of you who are struggling to do that, uh, don't quit. You know, I don't care how many times you do it in a lifetime. It took me until I was 65, but I did it. And it was really funny because I don't think I would have done it without a vaporizer. You know, I have one of those electronic cigarettes and I had a he heavy duty one. Um, and it, because I was in Canada at the time, they didn't allow nicotine juice into Canada. So basically what I did is I started to complement the vaping machine with um, cigarettes. In other words, I would smoke some cigarettes and the rest of the time I would vape. And I tried to cut out what I call the non-thinking cigarettes. You know, sitting at the computer, um, doing stuff. I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes that I'd start and not really smoke, and you know, subconscious sort of just whatever. And then there'd be those, in, you know, I smoked in my car as well, and uh, those were pretty almost subconscious things as well. So. Uh, what I did was I started, for example, in my car, saying to myself, well, you know, I can vape until the first traffic light. Because, you know, getting in the car and lighting a cigarette were sort of part of a routine. Uh, and I'm certain a lot of people will relate to this. It's, it's you know, it's not... It, it's sort of, you know, put the <laughs> key in the ignition, light a cigarette. You know, <laughs> it's just like part of, part of a natural routine. So what I did was try to break that routine, and I did it by saying, okay, um, you, you can smoke at the first traffic light. Now, the first traffic light for me is like two sides or a block away. You know, so that was doable. I, it, it felt weird, but it was doable. And then I did that for about a week, and then I went, okay, now to the second traffic light. Now, the second traffic light was quite a way past there. Probably only a couple of blocks, <laughs> but it seemed like a long way at the time, I remember that. But anyway, the main thing was, I kept building on that, but I could vape as much as I liked, you see, that was the thing. It wasn't that you couldn't get the action of smoking, because the electronic cigarette made you feel that you were smoking, but you just weren't smoking a cigarette. So, and I always remember the first day I went all the way to work and didn't have a single cigarette. That was quite the day. Um, 
and I know that what I did, and I know it sounds really stupid, what I did is I stood outside work and had a cigarette. But it, it didn't matter. The thing was, I had driven all the way to work without one, and that, to me, was huge progress. Anyway, so I did things like that for about a year, where I just kept trying to improve, and I cut down by over half. And then the question was, what made the difference? What, what took me from half to zero? And that was Juliana. I've got to give full credit for those of you who know Benji and Judy, and Juliana, and now the twins. Um, Benji and Judy had invited me down to meet Juliana, and she was just a couple of months old. And it was really a double whammy for me because I also knew that they you know, had just moved into their new house a couple of months before as well. They did it all roughly at the same time, which was must have been very stressful, but they, yeah, they do things like that, so <laughs> they're young. So um, I kept thinking to myself, I don't care how much I rationalize it. I smell of smoke, my clothes smell of smoke. And I'm going to walk into a brand new house with a brand new baby smelling of smoke. And so what I did was before I left home, I did my wash of my clothes. And I put everything into plastic bags in my suitcase. Because I was pretty sure that that would protect them to some degree. And then, of course, I um, Febrezed my suitcase inside and out, seriously febrezed it. And in the hope that I could get the smell out of my suitcase, which probably didn't, but at least I tried. And then the, the morning that I got up on January the 12th, the day I was driving, I actually got dressed and I had a cigarette when I got dressed. I remember that. But from the moment I left the front door, I didn't smoke. And I had a patch, I had patches with me, you know, the, the nicotine patches. I had that with me. I did everything I could to make this doable. And to cut a very long story short, my biggest fear was what was going to happen when I came back through the border and my routine always coming through the border was stop at duty free and pick up a carton of cigarettes. And I intentionally did not go to duty free. I went the other route where there is no duty free. And I can honestly say without fear of anybody catching me on a lie anywhere, <laughs> I have not had so much of a puff of cigarette since then. Now I have had the odd puff of, the, of my e-cigarette, again, without nicotine. Um, um, but it's really funny if I get really, 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 really stressed and I just go, okay, I need a, I need a puff of my e-cigarette and I'll have one puff or two and I put it down and that's it for maybe a month. So I always give thanks to Juliana for the fact that I gave up smoking because <clears throat> She was that important to me at the time. And she still is. <laughs> I tell you something, you, you look at her and her temper tantrum and you go, yeah, right. <laughs> We've got so much more coming, I know. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, I think, I think. <laughs> um, I've said to, I said to, uh, Benji and Judy, when, when I first looked at her uh, and watched her, I said, I, th I think we're going to have some challenges. <laughs> My whole sense was, yeah, uh, she was going to be entertaining, that's for sure. So I've had a number of requests from people to, to um, talk about certain subjects, which I'm going to be doing during the week. But just to give you a quick recap on the weekend, um, uh, 
I'm pretty sure you all know by now that Paul had really good news that he does not have cancer, um, that the tumor that he has on his tonsils is benign, so that we all got to talk about that this weekend. We heard that um, Jenny Jen Jen's little girl is going to be called Amelia, which is so cute. Um, and that they had this really cute baby shower um, with little lambs all over the place. It was just so cute. <laughs> um, what else did we hear this weekend? I'm just trying to remember. I believe that um, Robin's one dog isn't doing too well. I've had a couple of people ask me for thoughts and prayers, and by the way, if any of you um, have any need for that, please uh, just let us know, because I normally try and put that up on Facebook so that we get the... Um, the Facebook sort of acts as the newspaper, if you like, for the Dear Mama Cell peeps, particularly the broadcast people, and they are very good at giving thoughts and prayers. They're, they really do a good job. So if ever you have any need for that, just let us know. And uh, I will do what I can to get it up on the notice board that's called Facebook. <laughs> the incredible thing this weekend was that for some reason, and I can't tell you why specifically I did it, I put up a 42 second clip of me cutting, carving turkey. And what amazed me was that it went sort of like ridiculous. Um, it did sort of like 50,000 in, in 24 hours. It reached 50,000 people. I, I can't understand why. And 20,000 of them actually watched the video. You're going, really? I'm carving turkey, people. <laughs> but it was really weird. Um, so it goes to show you that you really have no idea, you know, what you should be putting up and what you shouldn't. And I guess it, it, it answers the question, which is you put up anything that you can because you, you never know what it is that people want to see. So that was really amazing. Oh, the other thing is I want to give thanks to Aaron, Ashley, um, and Sophie, who, uh, Sophie in England, um, if I haven't already, I think I might have done this on Friday. But anyway, I just want to give thanks to them because they've all volunteered their time, and Matthew as well, and, um, to help me sort of get things more consistently on things like Pinterest and, and um, Instagram. And one of the things that we need to make sure everybody knows is that somebody stole my name on Instagram. So the Dear Mama Sal board on Instagram isn't mine. Mine is the real Dear Mama Sal. T-H-E-R-E-A-L Dear Mama Sal the real or one word um, so I need to update everything and make sure everybody knows that uh, and I will be doing that and Sophie's going to be reminding me until I do it's called nag me to pieces until I've got it done <laughs> uh, but it is interesting that somebody stole my name and they have uh, they for some reason suddenly have 600 followers and I'm pretty sure they're mine. <laughs> so if you have followed Dear Mama Sal, unfollow, and then re-follow the Dear Mama Sal. But everything else is just Dear Mama Sal. You know, the Pinterest, the Facebook, everything else just is Dear Mama Sal. This one person just got really smart and got there before I did. And I just went, hmm, nice. So, it was a, a good busy weekend. Um, some of you might have heard 
um, that I had a little bit of a problem yesterday. I came off the broadcast and was trying to cook roast beef and Yorkshire pudding and suddenly my drain blocked. And that was not fun. The drain in my kitchen. So we spent half an hour trying to unclog that drain, which we did eventually. We did a hard job. We worked really hard at it, Ivan and I. But you know, it, <laughs> if you're trying to cook roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, there are a lot of critical times attached to roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. And trying to unplug plug drains and do it at the same time was quite interesting. But we did it. I was absolutely amazed. We actually did it. I think we were 15 minutes late on the meal, uh, which was pretty impressive. So, uh, we will see. So, my thought for the day is just update, because it really has been a day of updates and celebration, obviously, of the fact that it's two years since I had a cigarette. And for anybody else who's quit, uh, I'm, I would like to acknowledge all those people, people like Kerry and Marilyn and Linda, who's quit smoking in her car, which takes an awful lot of discipline as well. Um, and for those of you thinking about doing so, it's, it's always worth a good thought at this time of the year. And I really do believe that I couldn't do it if I thought I was never going to have a cigarette again, which I know I'm not, but um, I just really do think, I, you know, <laughs> I'll just do one more day. And each day has turned into two years, so I'm very proud of myself for that. Uh, I, I was talking to Kerry over the weekend, and Kerry's, you know, 300 days in now, and over 300. And one of the things that I said to her was, you know, with all that's happened to her, um, she's had some very stressful things go down over the course of the last um, 300 days, and yet she still hasn't you know, gone back to smoking. And that takes a lot of mindset. And I thought it was really interesting that she has managed to do that, because it sort of tells you that she really does want to stop smoking. And she also um, did it with a vaping, you know, with an electronic cigarette. Uh, but she had nicotine juice, and she was also telling me that she has now stepped down the level of nicotine juice. So she's really on her way to, you know, just really getting that out of her system. I think one of the questions I always get asked is, don't you feel so much better? And... I'd love to say yes. <laughs> I don't cough as much, there's no doubt about that. Um, the one thing that really you notice more than anything, I think, is, and it's a horrific thing to realize, is that you were always bound to your cigarettes. You know, you didn't move from point A to point B, you didn't move from one room to the other without grabbing your cigarettes. You didn't go from the house to the car without grabbing your cigarettes. You know what I mean? It's just like everything was linked to this packet of cigarettes. So I don't miss that at all. Now I'm just going to find my keys and my glasses. <laughs> Which, as you've heard, can be challenging some days. Can't find my keys unless I'm wearing my glasses, and if I've lost my glasses, I can't find them. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> I'm certain some of you relate to that as well. So it is six degrees. I don't think I mentioned that. It's six degrees here, which would make it 42 equivalent in the States, which is good. Um, we're hoping for a very pleasant day. Pleasant in as much as peaceful. Uh, it was a very, very 
sad day in Europe uh, this weekend and I am just so glad that so many people came out and supported freedom. It was really quite moving for um, those of you who don't know that there were a couple of terror terrorist attacks in, uh, in Paris over the weekend and um, I think about 12 people got killed, maybe 14, I can't quite remember, no, 17 I think, 17 people got killed. Um, and the French nation came out I think something like 1.5 million people came out in Paris alone. Wow, just amazing. I think we all need to be very aware of how lucky we are to have freedom and to remind ourselves how lucky we are and not to abuse it. I have freedom on so many levels, including freedom from cigarettes. And I really am very, very grateful. This is dear Mama Sal saying, have a wonderful week. Look after one another. Because everybody needs a friend. This is dear Mama Sal saying, bye bye for now.